Hello, fellow Corvette lovers. My name is Shannon LaMarche, and I'm proud to serve on the board of directors at our National Corvette Museum. One thing I've really been enjoying during this unique time is the incredible online content provided by the museum. I love that I can see the museum virtually until I can walk through the doors again myself. If you're enjoying these videos as much as I am, I encourage you to join me in giving back to the museum with an online gift. Please visit corvettemuseum.org slash give and support NCM. Now please enjoy today's episode of Vetcademy. Hey kids, welcome to Vet Academy here at the National Corvette Museum. And on today's episode, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the automotive assembly line and how it's used, and also a little bit about its history. Now the Corvette is built on assembly line here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, but how did we get to the point where we were using the assembly line for the automobile? Well, we have to go back to the late 1800s when automobiles were actually built in stationary assembly setups. Now, what that means is one car would be in a workstation and the workers in that workstation would assemble all the parts of the car together in one spot to actually build the car. That wasn't very efficient for automotive manufacturing because it didn't allow the automobile manufacturer to produce a high number of automobiles to sell to the public. It also was very expensive to build cars that way. That made the car expensive to buy. Now, in the early 1900s, right around 1913, a gentleman named Henry Ford, you may have heard of him in class, he introduced the assembly line process to automotive manufacturing in Detroit, Michigan, building his Ford Model T's. Now, the assembly line allowed Henry Ford to build a mass number, or a lot, of Model T Fords at a very reasonable price, which made them affordable to the general public. That allowed most Americans and most people around the world to actually afford an automobile for the first time. Now, let's fast forward to 1953. General Motors and Chevrolet are introducing a new car called the Corvette, and they need to prove that the car can be built on an assembly line efficiently and effectively. So, in Flint, Michigan, they set up a temporary assembly line, and they build 300 Corvettes. They prove that the Corvette can be built on an assembly line and that they can actually produce the car for sale to the public. In 1954, General Motors decides to move Corvette production from the Flint assembly plant, which was a temporary setup, to St. Louis, Missouri, to a plant that already existed. Now, it was built in the 1920s to assemble early Chevrolet automobiles, but they updated the plant so that it could handle Corvette production. Now, from 1954 until 1981, they assembled the Corvettes at that St. Louis factory, but with Corvette becoming a more and more modern and up-to-date automobile, the plant was limited on how much it could do. They were out of room and they couldn't update the building or build a bigger building anymore. So, GM looked around and they found a property here in Bowling Green, Kentucky, that they could turn into a new assembly plant for Corvette. And in 1981, that plant opened up and began production of Corvettes on an assembly line. Now those Corvettes are still built right across the street from the museum today and still built on an assembly line. That assembly line has changed over time and today with the new mid-engine Corvette, it is extremely technologically advanced. Now, one of the coolest spots on the assembly line, at least I think it's one of the coolest, is what is known as the marriage. And this is where the chassis and the driveline of the automobile actually has the body set on top of it, and the two pieces are married or put together. 
Now this is the first time the car actually looks like what you see out on the roads when you're driving around. So it's a really, really cool spot on the assembly line to see the car actually come together. How might you be able to think about the assembly line at home? Well, think about all the things you do during the day and think about how maybe one of those or many of those could be done on an assembly line. One example I would give you is maybe dinner. Maybe you're having tacos. You would simply take the taco shell, put it on your plate, and then hand your plate to your mom or dad, have them add the next piece of the puzzle to that taco. It would work all the way around the table through your family, and when it got back to you, it would be a fully assembled taco. Hopefully you've enjoyed learning a little bit about assembly lines, their history, and how Corvettes are built on an assembly line even to this day. Come back on Wednesday to learn all about special edition Corvettes, which are still built on the assembly line, and why they are so special in the history of Corvettes.